Okay, so today we are going to finish up with protein synthesis, talking about mutations, kind of how our DNA gets messed up and how uh, it can affect us in different ways. So the first thing to note is take a look at these few sentences. So the cat, big fat cat ate the wet rat. So you have four sentences below this. Take a minute, go over these four sentences. How do they look different from our original sentence? Okay, so uh, looking at our first one, you can see that in our first, first sentence, we have the biz fat cat ate the wet rat. So you can see that one of our letters were changed. In the second one, we have big and then rat. So this whole section right here got cut out. And then in the third one, we have the vib igf at uh, at a hue etter at. So you see that we have moved everything a bit forward. So normally rat would be right there. What would be right there? The eight cat fat and big so we are missing an e right there same thing with this one the big zifa tka uh, tat f u tra so this one we have again we are missing a t on the end wet the eight cat fat but we have this z right here that was added in so this is how our mutations are gonna work. These are four different examples of different mutations that we will see. And in total, a mutation is just going to be a permanent change that's going to occur in the cell's DNA. It's going to cause an amino acid to be produced that was not usually put there, um, or some sort of change to the DNA that wasn't originally put there. Um, in terms of types of mutations, we have a couple different types. We miss sense and nonsense, both of these are substitutions. We have deletions and insertions with their both with our which are both frame shifts. We have dupli duplication and expanding mutations or tandem repeats. We are not going to go over duplications or expanding, but we will cover the other four. One thing to note is that um, there are also silent mutations. What these are is when you get a change in the genetic genetic code that's going to result in the same amino acid. We'll talk about that on the next slide. But this isn't going to change the protein itself at all. It just changes the code that was used to make the protein. So the first one, a missense mutation. This is a point mutation in which we are editing one single base pair. We are not editing the whole one. We are just getting a single one. And a point mutation is only going to swap one base for another. So this is a substitution mutation. So you can see in ours we have biz instead of big, so we swap the Z for a or a swap the G for a Z. And sometimes this isn't going to cause errors. This is when we get our silent mutation. So what happens is the uh, genetic code is fairly redundant. Redundant just means that multiple codons are going to code for the same thing. Usually redundant means repetitive. So redundancy in the um, amino acids means that we have multiple that are all going to code for the same thing. So you see we have leucine up here, which is UUA or UUG. But down here you can also see we have U or CUU, CUC, CUA and CUG, all which code for the same amino acid. Same thing over here, we have arginine, which has four, actually it has six as well. But you see up here we have UGG for tryptophan, so there's only one that actually codes for tryptophan. So some uh, amino acids usually uh, have multiple different codons to ma map for the same thing. And this is when silent mutations occur. For example, if we take uh, UU or CUU and we swap a G in there, it's not going to actually do anything to our end protein. The next one is a nonsense mutation. And what that happens is a, again, a, a substitution mutation. But this one's going to cause a single base pair edit that makes our codon into a stop codon. So we have three different stop codons. We have U, A, A, 
UGA and UAG. And you can see that if we were to edit, let's say we have a UUC, something gets mutated and we get an A, or an a that would cause a stop codon which would cut off our protein at the source. So you can see the big fat cat ate the wet rat and we have the big rat. So what happened here is some sort of mutation happened which caused fat to be a stop codon. Normally stop codons don't actually code for any actual amino acids. This got cut off and something in wet would have had to be taken as a start codon so that rat could be added in again. So somewhere there was a stop and start um, because of that mutation. Like I said, we have three potential stop codons. So we, if, we, if we mess up, let's say tyrosine goes from UAC into UAG, that's going to put in a stop codon and that's going to be a nonsense mutation. Moving on to our frame shift mutations. Frame shifts just mean that the way the mRNA is going to be read is shifted. Um, same thing if you were reading a book and you read each book one letter early or each word one letter early, that would be a frame shift. It's changing your reading frame. And the deletion just means that we are going to take one base pair and we're just going to cut it out. So in this one, the E is cut out, moving every letter forward. We can't have a stop because then that's going to cut our mRNA in half. So we have to move everything forward so that they're stuck nice together. Um, and this is going to shift everything forward. So all of these codons are now going to code for a new amino acid, which is not good for us. Um, for example, if you were coding for, let's say, uh, an enzyme that needs this code, this code on top here, um, using a mutation like this could drastically alter or change how the enzyme works if it is formed at all. On the other hand, we have an insertion. Insertions are just additions of base pairs. Again, it's going to shift everything back one so it's going to shift how it is read. Um, and again, this is going to cause errors in the amino acids that are produced and how the protein is going to function. But this one is adding, deletion, just like you hitting the delete key on your computer, it's going to remove a base pair. So looking at some of these different diseases that are usually associated with genetic mutations, um, Missense mutations are going to be things like achondroplasia, which is a uh, dwarfism where you have really long arms and legs um, based on improper development. Uh, your bones don't form properly, so they're really long and skinny. Um, nonsense mutations are going to be something like muscular dystrophy, where you get a muscle disorder that's just uh, making your muscles weaker. Uh, Deletion would be something like cystic fibrosis, where you have uh, thick mucus in the lungs that have met, make it hard to breathe. Um, insertion mutations can be things like Crohn's disease, which is a um, digestive tract disease. Your intestines are inflamed. Um, you have a lot of stomach problems, and you have trouble eating a lot of things. And then expanding mutations just mean that we are copying it multiple times. Um, this could be something like Huntington's disease, Huntington's disease where we have a disease that is going to uh, cause the brain cells to actually waste away. Um, and it's going to cause a lot of issues emotionally uh, in terms of your motor function and behaviorally. One that is very common though, and one that you will see if you go into the medical field is sickle cell anemia. What happens here is we have a normal beta globin, uh, that is the protein found in the middle of a uh, red blood cell. It's what holds our oxygen. And in our normal ones, we have a uh, GAG turns into a uh, glutamic acid. In the mutant one, in the sickle cell anemia one, we swap the A for a U, which means that we are going to produce valine. What happens is this actually shape changes the shape 
of our red, red blood cells from a kind of donut shape to a sickle or kind of banana looking one. What this is going to do is not only can it block up arteries causing um, clots, but it, can, it doesn't hold oxygen as well as our normal red blood cells. So people with sickle cell anemia typically have a harder time breathing um, because their, uh, their blood cells don't hold the oxygen like a normal cell does. Now, causes of mutations, we have a lot of different causes. Sometimes they can just occur spontaneously. For example, a lot of um, mutations and adaptations come from just spontaneous evolution. Other ones can be affected by chemicals and radiation though. Um, and what happens is that actually damages the DNA. So these are called mutagens and they are typically uh, caused by base mispairs um, so that the DNA doesn't actually form correctly. Other ones can resemble other nucleotides so they can be replaced. Um, and these are called imposter nucleotides but there are different uses for them. For example, HIV vaccine is caught or used, uses these kind of mutagens so that we can modify your DNA so that it properly functions. Otherwise though, we have uh, different forms of radiation. So for example, x-rays, usually you have to wear a lead vest whenever you go for an x-ray and they'll only turn it on and turn it right back off. Um, because too much exposure to x-rays is damaging to your DNA. Same thing gamma rays, if you've ever watched The Incredible Hulk or if you ever heard of The Incredible Hulk. Um, his superpower was that he turned uh, really big, really strong, and really green, and that was due to gamma ray um, exposure. Same thing, it's going to cause damage to your DNA, kind of like this, where the bases are actually mispaired. Um, the other one, and probably the most common one, is UV radiation, which we get from our sun. So ultraviolet radiation um, is what allows you to get a suntan, um, but too much exposure to the sun it can lead to things like skin cancer. Uh, skin cancer being uh, a mutation that stops the regulation of reproduction for your cells, which leads to things like tumors and things like that. So take a minute, uh, jot down whether you think it would be worse uh, to get a mutation in a somatic cell or a germ cell and why. Okay, so just a reminder, somatic cells are our body cells, like our skin cells, our um, tissue cells. Germ cells are your reproductive cells, so sperm and egg. And there are downsides to both of these. So in somatic cells, germ. So in somatic cells, we actually have mitosis to create our somatic cells. And this allows all of the DNA to be passed from one cell to another. So if we have a mutation, for example, something that causes a gene for cancer or something like that, it's most likely going to be passed down through each cell via mitosis. In uh, germ cells, however, we do meiosis. So the each sex cell, whether it's a sperm or an egg, it will do meiosis, which gives it half. So there is a 50% chance that each sperm and egg would have that mutation. And that means there's also a 50% chance that you as the, your parents' offspring get that mutation because if each uh, gamete has a 50% chance of having that, you get half of your genes from mom, half of your genes from dad. If you get half, let's say you get a disease gene in your dad but not in your mom, typically that will result in you being a carrier. A carrier means that you have one trait but not the other, so it can't be fully expressed. Some of them do exist um, as long as you have half, but typically you will be a carrier, which means you will have the gene but not experience the symptoms of that disease.
And the last question, uh, take a minute, jot this down. What happens when something goes wrong involving the genetic material and how can it be detected? Um, so this is one of our LEQs, so go through, uh, jot down what you think your answer for this would be. Okay, so if something goes wrong with the genetic material, that's when we get a mutation. How can it be detected? There's a couple different ways. Um, sometimes you can tell visually that's not going to be a very clear indicator though. I mean, it's possible, but a lot of genetic diseases are not something you can see with the naked eye. So the best way to detect this is through sampling our DNA. This is something we will continue talking about when we get into genetics here after Thanksgiving. Um, DNA sampling or sequencing is going to allow us to look at the individual nucleotides and figure out what should be there, what shouldn't be there, um, and what effects those genes could have on ourselves as humans or on different organisms. Um, there's a lot of DNA sequencing. I, in college, worked on a project sequencing uh, Amish and Mennonite populations to identify different uh, genetic diseases within them. So it is something that is very up and coming in terms of medicine. Um, it's also very good. You can have genetic counseling. Um, if you go to have a child, you can do sequencing just to see if you have um, traits for different diseases, different hereditary diseases. Um, so sequencing is going to be our kind of main source for figuring out whether or not we're actually going to have a disease. Okay, so that is all we will talk about today. Um, like I said, after the break, we will be moving on to genetics. So we will be applying all of this protein synthesis so that we can figure out how we look like we do and what traits go into creating us as human beings.